So 25 years ago, I celebrated my very first Mother's Day. Now, admittedly, I wasn't officially a mom yet, but just a few weeks before that, I had met our oldest son, Chris, for the first time. And his foster mother made sure that there were flowers to give to his mother-to-be. And, and he had made a, a, a beautiful necklace in his preschool class that he gave to me. 25 years later, we are marking the second anniversary of his tragic death. And while Jim assures me that our other two children are planning to come and see me and are even talking about how they might procure a hazmed suits so that they can give me a warm hug, I realize that for the first time in 25 years, Mother's Day may not be much of a celebration for me or for many of us. Jesus' words speak across the centuries. Don't let your hearts be troubled. And I may need to believe his compassionate promises with every fiber of my being. I need to believe that he is speaking to me, to you. Perhaps you can relate all too well yourselves to these sentiments, whether you are male or female, young or old, parent or child. Our hearts have been troubled these past weeks, and I suspect they will continue to be troubled for quite some time. There is much we do not know about what lies ahead, where we are going, what the journey looks like for us. Jesus' words speak across the centuries. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that wherever I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. <laughs> and I need to believe with every fiber of my being that he is speaking these words to us, that no matter what the road ahead holds for us, that there is a place with Jesus that is already being prepared. We do not need to fear what we do not know because our Lord and Savior is beside us. Jesus, as the author of Second Peter has written, is the cornerstone of our faith. Christ, as the psalmist has recorded, is our rock and our salvation. He is, in his own words, the way, the truth, and the life. And we need to believe that this is true and that he speaks these words to us. He told the disciples that they knew the way. And of course they argued with him. How can we know, they asked. How could we possibly know? They are questioning out of fear, I suppose. They are confused. Things have not been going the way they thought they would go. And we haven't even gotten to the part of the story where Jesus is arrested, tried, convicted, and crucified yet. Jesus has been trying unsuccessfully, it seems to prepare his disciples for what is about to happen, but these poor lost sheep haven't got a clue of what's in store for them. And I wanna stop right here and reflect a moment on that because many of us, if not most of us, are right there with those poor unsuspecting disciples right now. We haven't got a clue what lies ahead. This past week, decisions have been made by leaders across this nation on how and when restrictions concerning the COVID-19 pandemic are going to be lifted. And let's get one thing straight. Life may never be normal again. It probably will never be just the way it always used to be, any more than we have returned to life completely as it was before September 11th, 2001. But others have pointed out that the world has had challenges in the past, world wars, famines, the Great Depression, floods, plagues, and in each case, the best and worst of humanity could be seen. But somehow people regrouped, adapted, and faced the challenges and changes as best they could. Through this time, I have been serving as a coordinator for a spiritual care team in the Indiana Kentucky Conference of the United Church of Christ, it's my task to oversee 10 other pastors 
who are each charged with making a personal phone call or contact with four or five other pastors or chaplains just to check in and see how they and their congregations are doing. I also have four or five pastors and chaplains of my own that I check in with. And one of them this week responded when I asked how things were going that, that she and the folks she's been calling are all doing pretty well, other than what we're all challenged with, she said, trying to find new ways of being the church the best we can. Oh yes, we're right there with those disciples. And some of our hearts are troubled indeed. What is the best path forward? Now, some churches are prepared to jump right back into things as usual. And I suppose if they have their safety measures in place, that's okay. Others are not quite ready yet, not willing to take unnecessary risks for their members. And so they are determined to not meet physically until and unless there are plans in place to protect our most vulnerable. Here at First Congregational, the pastors and the church board have determined that we're going to take it slowly. We are hoping to go live stream beginning next Sunday from the sanctuary with only a minimal necessary staff in the sanctuary. We are committed that we will continue to provide online access to worship even after we begin meeting in person because there are just so many of our church members who are in what's called the vulnerable category and their spiritual well-being is as important to us as their physical well-being. The financial security of all congregations are, are of course of concern and we here at First Congregational know that the Strawberry Festival cannot be held on its usual week in June in its usual fashion. The festival committee will be making recommendations as to whether it's even feasible to hold a festival this year, whether it's better to postpone or cancel it altogether. Oh yes, there are hearts that are troubled. Like the disciples, we want to know what to do and when to do it and how to do it. And we need to hear Christ's promises of hope. So Jesus' voice speaks to us across the centuries. Don't let your hearts be troubled, he assures us. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am preparing something wonderful for you. Follow me there. Stay with me. You know how to get there. How can we possibly know, Lord? How can we know? Oh yes, many of us are right there with the disciples, aren't we? Show us, Jesus. Show us the way. We need to know what and when and how. Oh yes, there are hearts that are troubled. Jim and I have been able to attend all kinds of workshops and training webinars online during this sheltering at home time. A lot of them are designed to encourage frazzled pastors who like old dogs are being forced to learn new tricks. <laughs> Many of them are meant to reassure us that there are blessings that are coming out of all of this, that some of the things that we are being forced to try and forced to do are going to have long lasting benefits. We just have to look for them, we're told, and trust the leading of the Spirit. Well, now I have always been able to find the blessings in the midst of the troubles in my life. So you better believe that I am looking extra hard right now to see where they are hiding. I'm looking intently to discern what it is that the Holy Spirit is calling us and myself to be and to do as we move forward with this blessed gift of life that is ours. This life may never be quite the same as it was before. Show us, God, the disciples demanded, or at least requested. I can almost imagine Jesus shaking his head as he said, Have you not seen God yet through me? And then Jesus told them, Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. He went on saying, Whoever believes in me shall do great things. In fact, your works will be even greater. And whatever you ask in my name will be done to glorify God. 
I see the troubled hearts around me. And I need to believe that Christ is speaking these words to us, to you and to me right here, right now. I have to believe that even now Jesus is preparing something wonderful for his people. That those of us that call ourselves by his name are being called to do great things. We are being empowered to do what we never thought we could ever do. We, we, to reach out to people we would never have known how to reach to share the promise and hope of God in ways that will soothe not only our own troubled hearts, but hearts that have, in many cases, up to this point, been hardened. Empowered by the Spirit, we are called to reveal the Father to others so that they may know the Son, who is the way, the truth, and the life. They will know. They will see God through you and through me. God will show us the way. The Reverend Billy Graham tells a story of a time early in his ministry when he arrived in a small town to preach and he needed to mail a letter. So he saw a young boy on the sidewalk and he asked him to tell him where the post office was. And after the boy had told him, Dr. Graham said, you know, if you will come to the church tonight, I will tell you how you can get to heaven. The little boy thought about it for a moment and he said, no, thank you, sir. I don't think I will be there. You don't even know how to get to the post office. <laughs> we may not know all the answers, but we know the one who does. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And when he tells us in these times of trouble, in these times of great change and uncertainty, in these times of illness and fear, when he speaks the words and says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I have to believe. I must believe. He is speaking to you and to me in the here and in the now. And our hearts will find peace. Would you pray with me this prayer that was written by Anne Ozovic? Jesus, like your disciples, our hearts are troubled. Is there an escape, we ask, from this pandemic? Be with us now, please. To know you is to know and love the Father and the Spirit, and that is everything. No fear there. You are our way, our truth, and our life. Wherever you abide, that is the place we always want to be. Circling in eternal self-giving love with you, the Father, and your Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.